Mm. Bonnie, is it you today? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bonnie, is it you today? <laughs> <laughs>
Good morning. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, 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 she right. Look at it, I'm online. No, she right, I don't need it. Good morning, y'all. We just trying to take care of some stuff and uh, welcome everybody to another uh, Bible study. I had it wrong, Deke. All right, okay. Yeah, because uh, I broke this one down in two. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it'll be another short one so everybody can get back to their right. uh, daily routine right. of sleeping and doing nothing <laughs> or cleaning up around the house or washing the car. Uh, this is Partaker's Pathway Bible Study. It's good, Florina. I messed up. Uh, and we're glad to have everybody here. We thank and praise God for those of you who have tuned in who are online with us. We want to encourage you that if you're watching via Facebook Live, that you would hit that share button and share this Bible study with someone on your timeline <clears throat> who may be in need uh, of a word of God or of the word of God in this capacity or this uh, subject that we're studying called prayer. Uh, if you need a copy of the Bible study outline, you can go to the church's website, partakerscb.org. Click on the services tab, download a copy of the outline so that you could keep up with us. Uh, again, not a, not a long lesson, but a strong lesson. Uh, nonetheless, thank and praise God for the few folk who are in, in the building. With Hallelujah! Us. Including my sister and, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, virtual member who's here in person for the new members graduation, my sister Lolita. My, Hallelujah. My, Hallelujah. Got my great niece, Emma Gray. Yeah. Emma Gray. Lord have mercy. Emma Grace. Uh, I'm so used to calling her egg. I'm so used to calling her egg. But so glad to have them here uh, with us. And those of you uh, who have signed in, who are watching via Facebook Live and YouTube Live, we thank and praise God for you and welcome you. We appreciate uh uh our media people for the great job that they do in making me look this handsome amen amen <laughs> we're gonna get we're gonna get into we're gonna get into the lesson let's start with a word of prayer god our father in heaven we thank you we praise you we bless your holy and most righteous name Thank you for allowing us to wake up this morning, uh, watching over us as we slumbered and slept last night, granting us traveling grace and arrival mercies to the various destinations uh, that you, we've arrived at. God, you are good, you're great and greatly to be praised. Uh, we appreciate you for who you are, what you've done and what you have yet to do in the lives of your people. We pray God in the name of Jesus that you would forgive us of our sins, that you are creating us clean hearts, oh God, renew a right spirit within us that we can continue doing your holy and most righteous will. Lead this Bible study, guide this Bible study, have your way uh, in this Bible study with your people for your glory. Be the teacher and the preacher in this moment. Let not flesh glory in any way, shape, form, nor fashion, but let the real teacher, the Holy Ghost, fill us even now that we may speak with clarity and conviction and that the hearer will be blessed. Uh, the hearer will consider a closer walk with thee. As we thank you and praise you for all things in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I, I, I'm kind of excited and tickled about this particular one. We, again, we're studying Prayer 101, Experiencing the Heart of God, of the book by Warren Wearsby. We're still in semester one uh, uh, under the uh, title Essential Prayers. And today, uh, this is kind of a funny one, but it's very important. So I'm praying that you pay attention. Look, this is why I ask those of you who are watching online uh, 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 to please share this. Now, the only people who I expect us to flow to get upset about this lesson are the deacons. <laughs> I'm picking over because y'all know they, they do them half hour prayers and some of them older <laughs> preachers. And so that this this was just kind of funny. He done prayed my hot dog cold. <laughs> Amen. Amen. 
the lesson begins by teaching us, here's a generic version of a story that was told to me by a man who was at the event. And he says the details have been deleted in order to protect this author and the people who were involved. He says, at the annual conference of an evangelical mission board, while the women were at a fancy tea, the men and children gathered to enjoy an old fashioned outdoor wiener roast. As we all know, at informal picnic gatherings, protocol demands that somebody ask the blessing before the, uh, the guests visit the tables and fill their plates. But on this occasion, the leader had the picnickers get their food first, and then he asked the guest speaker to pray. The good man prayed his way up and down the Himalayas and around the equator, and when he finally said amen, Everybody heard a young boy say very loudly to his father, Daddy, he done prayed my hot dog cold. <laughs> In a similar vein, I heard the story of an Air Force a cadet who wasn't ashamed of his faith. So at meals, he would reverently bow his head close his eyes and pray silently for seven minutes or several minutes. One day while he was praying, somebody stole his plate and hid it. Did he ever get it back? Writer says, I hope so, but I really don't know. If he did, he had probably prayed his rations cold. Paul wrote something in Galatians chapter four, verse 24. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As he wrote, uh, these figurative illustrations, he says, which things are an allegory, for these are the two covenants, the one from the Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar, but that key verse is that A part, which things are an allegory. That's the focus. So let's try to garner from some, some, uh, Let's try to uh, just garner from those allegories some truths to help us in our own prayer life. Uh, to begin with, why do we pray before we eat? I once asked a group of college students that question and they roared with laughter. One of them said, if you saw the food uh, that was served in the dining room, you'd pray too. <laughs> He says, I don't think that's true anymore. I've eaten excellent meals in college dining rooms. In another instance, I remember a missionary leader who sometimes ended his table prayer with, and Lord, kill the bugs. <laughs> well, he knew the situation better than we did. But back to the question, why do we pray before we eat? The lesson teaches us, obviously, we're giving thanks to the Lord for the food he's provided for us. We're grateful to God, or should be. Amen. Amen. Jesus taught us to pray for daily bread. And when the bread is before us, we want to be thankful for God's gifts and for his faithfulness in caring for us. And before Jesus fed the 5,000, he looked up to heaven and prayed. We see that reflected in Mark chapter six, verse 41. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed and break the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before them. And the two fishes divided he among them all. He prayed. He also gave thanks at the Lord's supper. We see that in Mark chapter 14, verse 22. Amen. The Bible says, and as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and break it and gave to them and said, take, eat. This is my body. We also see it reflected in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Paul, the apostle Paul gave thanks for his food while he was on board a ship during a storm. And it encouraged the passengers and the crew 
to eat and to trust God. We see that in Acts chapter 27, verses 35 and 36. The Bible says, and when he had thus spoken, that word spoken is prayer, he took bread, gave thanks to God in the presence of them all, and when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then were they all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. When we look at 1 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verses 1 through 5, it warns us not to follow false teachers who ignore what Jesus taught in Mark 7 and what the early church decided in Acts chapter 15, that all food is clean and should be received with thanksgiving. Let's read 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 5. The Bible says, now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. You see it there? For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. And this includes chitlins. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And me and Sister Florina love us some chitlins. Oh, you don't? <laughs> I do. I'm, try I'm trying to... I speak the love of chitlins <laughs> over your life in Jesus' name. And hog And hog mold. Yes. That me, me and Deacon Ellen, we and amen. That's right. Hallelujah. God made chitlins and the Bible says it's good. That's it right. should be received with thanksgiving. That this is why he wrote. This is why, that's what Paul meant when he wrote in that fifth verse again, 1 Timothy 4 and 5. It, uh, the food, uh, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. It means the food is consecrated by the word of God in prayer. The scriptures say the food is clean and prayer consecrates the food to the Lord so that he can use it to sustain us. Amen. Now, that doesn't mean that all foods are good for all of us. If you're a diabetic, the writer says, as I am, it will take more than the word of God in prayer to make a big piece of key lime pie clean for us. <laughs> he says, my heritage is Swedish and German, and very early on, I learned that my Scandinavian relatives also gave thanks after the meal, after enjoying coffee, homemade cake, and bilingual conversation, my uncle Simon Carlson would bow his head and give thanks in Swedish. And that was the signal that the meal had ended. Something to think about, isn't it? We pray before, but we sleep afterwards. Amen. Amen. He said, as a child, I thought this was a strange practice until years later when I read Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 10. Hallelujah. This is what it says. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. Prayer after the meal. Thanking God after the meal is an excellent discipline for people who are prone to eat too much during the meal. For how can they sincerely give thanks for those extra pounds they just put on? The writer says in quotation, I'm writing myself under conviction. Now, it appears then, ladies and gentlemen, then that a table prayer is first of all, an expression of thanks to the Lord for his gracious provision. It is also a consecration of the food and of ourselves as God's children who are strengthened by that food 
so that we may serve and glorify God. If God provides food for my body and wants to be glorified in and through my body, then not to thank him for food, oh my God, is base ingratitude. So is, so is enjoying that food and then using my body in any way I please. You know, we'll get full and use all that energy to sin. <laughs> hmm. Come back. Thank you, Sister Johnson. Oh, yeah, amen. A table prayer ought to be much more than a religious ritual. As we join our hearts with the one who is leading us in prayer, we should make it a time of both gratitude and dedication to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Number two. So then, how long should a table prayer be? Amen. <laughs> we learned from the first part that it should you shouldn't pray the hot dog cold. Amen. And the answer is long enough to accomplish the two purposes we just covered: gratitude and dedication to the Lord. But what if the spirit leads us to pray longer? <laughs> As many of us lie. The answer is in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 32. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. In other words, they're subject to the control of the prophets. If that's true of people who preach, would it not also be true of people who pray? After all, if the preacher or the person who is praying, uh, who is praying really is spirit-filled, hear this well, he or she will produce the fruit of the spirit, which includes self-control. Hallelujah. People who lose control aren't filled with the spirit. They are fooled by other spirits and following the flesh. And I can tell you, as a preacher, many times there have been many of those who have been assigned to do certain deeds, and they'll get up and add their little extra and lie and say the spirit led them to do it. Listen, listen, preachers, listen, deacons, listen, Christians. If you're invited uh, on a program uh, to, to perform a specific duty, be up, be brief, and be seated. Amen. That's how I was taught. Amen. Don't lie on God I'm about the spirit move. If you're on to pray, you don't need to get up and do a long welcome or sing a song. As soon as you get up to that podium, let us pray. Amen. I don't hear nobody. Amen. If you're asked to give two minute remarks, that's it. That's it. Amen. No, don't not 32. Don't kick it off with a song. That, you know, it, and, and lie and say the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us self-control. Flesh often takes those moments to try to glory. And it is not of God. He says, more than once in my conference ministry, I've experienced the truth of John chapter 10, verse 8. Hallelujah. The Bible says, all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Now, how does that tie into the context? He says, all who have come before me are thieves and robbers. The speakers who went before me took more time than what was allotted to them. And I was left with very little time for presenting the message I prepared. After the meeting, these speakers would excuse their thievery by saying, you know, when the spirit is in control, you just have to keep going. <laughs> but the spirit was not in control, amen, or they would have exercised self-control and watched the clock. Amen. Come on, Black Baptist. Amen. We'll do overtime, won't we? In a minute. Many years, he says, many years of radio ministry have taught me to say what I have to say right the first time and not waste expensive radio minutes circling the field and looking for a place to land. What applies to preaching 
should also apply to prayer. Evangelist George Whitfield said of a certain preacher, he prayed me into a good frame of mind. And if he had stopped there, it would have been very well. But he prayed me out of it again by keeping on. <laughs> <laughs> during one of his <laughs> we all know somebody who just they pray or they they just they just out of bounds when it comes to pulpit discipline and and and, and we feel it's our spiritual right because we have the microphone to just go and do whatever we want even though the You've been given a specific assignment. Please, uh, you know, my, my pastor didn't play. If you got up there and did anything other than he, what he told you to do, he would stand up and it run you right on off. They'd say, I, I apologize to the congregation. They just got a little carried away. And then when he got you by yourself, oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 did, you never wanted those me. And that discipline doesn't exist today. We think we have the Holy Ghost right to just be out of order and then lie and say the Holy Spirit was moving. No, that was all flesh. And then they think, Pastor, that when you say amen, we say amen to the prayer. We yeah. say amen and stop. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of the old school preachers now, you got to be careful, especially if you're visiting somewhere. They will snatch you down. They will tell the sound man to cut that mic off. Mm -hmm. Amen. amen. And, and embarrass you. Mm -hmm. He says, uh, uh, D.L. Moody, during one of his evangelistic campaigns, Dwight L. Moody asked the minister to lead in prayer. And the man went on and on and on, and the people began to leave the hall. Mm. Moody finally said, while our brother is finishing his prayer, we shall sing a hymn. <laughs> Moody didn't want the well-meaning preacher to pray the meeting code. And didn't Jesus have something to say about people who try to impress us with long prayers? Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 23, verse 14. Hallelujah. Why was Jesus' problem always with the church? Mm -hmm. Seems like today that problem still exists. Only now the church has a problem with Jesus. He yeah. says, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye devour widows' houses, and for repentance make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Amen. Got to be careful trying to use your eloquent words to impress folk who need a dictionary to understand what you're saying. Amen. It surprises some people to learn that the Lord sometimes tells people to stop praying. Lord, help us. We ain't going to get much help in that, Lee. I see you on here. Amen. When Israel came to the Red Sea after their exodus from Egypt, Moses was silently crying out to God for help as he tried to steal the people. The Lord knew this and said to him, look at what God told Moses in Exodus chapter 14, verse 15. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore crieth thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. And otherwise, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. <laughs> you trying to hold a prayer meeting and out and trying to get y'all to go forward. Stop praying and get moving. <laughs> he has this in parentheses, and I'm in agreement. More than one church needs to hear that command. Stop praying. Get moving. After the Lord told Moses he was not allowed to enter Canaan. Let's look at Numbers chapter 20, verses 1 through 13. We got time today. We still getting out early. Then, and Monica going to be happy. <laughs> then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation into the desert of Zin, in the first month, and the people abode in Kadesh, and Miriam died there and was buried there. And there was no water for the congregation, and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And the people chode with Moses, they gave him trouble, they, they chided with him, they, 
they came against him. They tried to argue, oh God. And, and space saying, well, God, that we had died when our brethren died before the Lord. And why have you, well, Moses, why you brought us up? Why have you brought this congregation of the Lord into this wilderness that we and our cattle should die there? And wherefore have ye made us to come up out of Egypt to bring us in unto this evil place? It is no place of seed or figs or vines or pomegranates, neither is there any water to drink. Boy, folk are plain. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and they fell upon their faces and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water. And thou shalt bring forth to them the water out of the rock, so thou shalt give the congregation and their beast. What does it say? Drink. Something to drink. And Moses took the rod before him. I'm sorry, Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron together, <clears throat> the congregation together before the rock and said unto them, hear now ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand with his rod and he smote the rock twice and the water came out abundantly and the congregation drank and their beasts also. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, because ye believed me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. Mm -hmm. This is the water of Meribah, because the children of Israel strove with the Lord. They were in strife with the Lord, and he was sanctified in them. Y'all think y'all be arguing and going off on the preacher, the pastor, the leader. Y'all doing it with God, and he ain't no joke. Amen. <clears throat> we don't always get it right. Uh, but you better be careful in your expressions of dissatisfaction towards how we do things on behalf of God. Amen? Amen. Moses prayed for God to remove that discipline and let him go into the land. See, I get the impression that Moses prayed this prayer frequently. One day, the Lord told Moses to drop the matter from his prayer list, and he obeyed. God told Moses what to do, but he allowed the people to get under his skin and end up smiting the rock, hitting the rock with the rod instead of speaking to it. As God had told them, pastors, don't you let the people get under your skin to the extent where you end up missing out on the promised land because of them. Amen. So he told, he told Moses, Moses, drop it. We ain't even talking about it no more. We see that in Deuteronomy chapter three, verses 23 through 39. And I besought the Lord at that time saying, O Lord God, has thou begun to show thy servant thy greatness and thy mighty hand? For what God is there in heaven or in earth that can do according to thy works and according to thy might? I pray thee, let me go over and see the good land that is beyond Jordan, that goodly mountain in Lebanon. But the Lord was wroth with me for your sakes and would not hear me. And the Lord said unto me, let it suffice thee, speak no more unto me of this matter. Get thee up into the top of Pisgah and lift up thine eyes westward and northward and southward and eastward. And behold it with thine eyes, for thou shalt not go over this Jordan. You can see it, Mo, but you ain't getting in. But charge Joshua, transitional leadership, and encourage him and strengthen him, your replacement. For he shall go over before this people, and he shall cause them to inherit the land which thou shalt see. 
So we abode in the valley over against Bethel. Lord said unto Joshua, get thee up. Wherefore lieth thou thus upon thy face? What you praying for? Get up. It's time to bust the move. Amen. Amen. Now, did we do 23 through 39? Yeah, it goes to 29. Oh, 29. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And here it says 39. Okay. Yeah. Typo. 29. Typo. typo. Somebody shout typo. Typo. Somebody type in typo. <laughs> Amen. 23 to 29. Now, following the humiliating defeat of Israel at Ai, and you see that in the entire chapter, seventh chapter of Joshua, Joshua tore his clothes, fell on his face, and spent all day crying out to God. God's response, let's look at Joshua chapter seven, verse 10. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Lord said unto Joshua, get thee up. I just read it earlier. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Stand up. What you doing down there? <laughs> there was a traitor in the camp and God expected Joshua to help expose him. After Paul prayed three times for healing, the Lord graciously stopped him and promised to give him grace to turn his burden into a blessing. The writer even says in my own prayer experience, several times I've been praying about some matter only to have the Lord convince me after a few, uh, 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 he says, uh, we fit. So, uh, in other words, after a few uh, uh, moments of, of, of begging and pleading, he said that it was time to stop. Either the request was out of his will or the answer was on its way. I didn't know then which it was, but I obediently stopped praying and later found out the result. Sometimes the red light flashes from a statement in the Bible. On other occasions, the signal is just a conviction in my heart given that I trust the Holy Spirit. He says, yes, but there is a time to pray, but there's also a time to act for the Lord wants us to be part of the answer to our prayers. We'll talk more about that in a later part and uh, take inventory of our prayers when we reach that particular part of the teaching. Let's hear the conclusion of the matter. If you are called to give God thanks for a meal, simply, somebody say simply. Simply. Simply ask him to bless the gifts and the recipients. Stick to that agenda and don't go on detours. Amen. Because the hot dog will get cold. <laughs> If you have special burdens on your heart and feel led to share them, perhaps you could do so after the meal and request that someone pray with you. If the other diners aren't in a hurry, you might remain at the table for a brief prayer meeting after the meal. I'm sure that God can bless a cold hot dog, but why expect him to do it? For that matter, God can perform a miracle and keep a hot dog warm while somebody's prayer, or while somebody's praying at length, but he never wastes miracles. Expecting that approach is very near to tempting God. Make every meal a holy and happy occasion. Remember what Moses and the elders experienced on Mount Sinai? Let's look at Exodus 24 and 11. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw God and did eat and drink. The experience of the two uh, uh, Emmaus disciples was similar. Jesus gave thanks and broke the bread. And let's look at what happens in Luke 24 and 31. Hallelujah. It says that their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. To quote Spurgeon, when you pray in public as a rule, the shorter, 
the better. Amen. <laughs> I know this was a brief Bible study, but the Lord is impressing upon my heart to give us enough to digest, enough to, uh, 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 to meditate on, because when it comes to prayer, traditionally, many of us just haven't gotten and we think the strength is in the length. And now, now yeah, the sincerity of your heart. Jesus gave the disciples a pattern in which to pray. And if you listen to most prayers in our church, they go so far out the pattern. They don't reverence God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We don't mention his kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Now, this is just a pattern. As it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, both now and forever. Amen. That took less than a minute. Covered everything Jesus wanted us to cover. But we got to get down on one knee. We got to have the organ backing us up. We got to get the towel to wipe the sweat and the bottle of water. To, to, to clear our throats after we done sit there and hollered and talked for a half hour. Amen. Amen. And so I'm grateful that the Lord has ordained love for these summer months and summer weeks for us to study on prayer. Again, if you're called to give God thanks for a meal, simply ask him to bless the gifts and the recipients. Stick to that agenda and don't go on detours. When you pray in public as a rule, the shorter, the better. Did this lesson bless anybody? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, as we are duty bound, I want to, if there's anyone who's been watching this, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, because I know everybody in the sanctuary is saved, uh, uh, you have an opportunity to come to Christ. Accept the invitation. Invite Jesus into your heart. Allow him to become savior and Lord of your life and begin your walk with him. I can help you with this simple prayer of salvation if you would just repeat these words. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner in need of a savior. I believe your son Jesus died, was buried, and on the third day God raised him from the dead. And because I believe in my heart, what I have just confessed with my mouth, I thank you, Lord, that I'm saved. Thank you for saving me from this world. Thank you for saving me from myself and from an eternity in hell. I give my life to you this day, and I thank you for receiving me into the family of faith. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you prayed that prayer with every bit of conviction and sincerity in your heart, welcome to being born again. Welcome to being a child of God. Hallelujah. And we encourage you uh, that to join our family. If you are without a church home, whether uh, physical or virtual uh, is your desire, you can email us at the email address that's on the screen, partakerschurch at outlook.com. We will lovingly welcome you into the Partakers family. I will be honored to serve as your pastor and we can go and grow in the things of Jesus together. Amen. Amen. All right, all right, all right. Listen, to this. look, the hot dog didn't even get cold for the Bible study. If the <laughs> Lord has moved upon your heart uh, to sow into this ministry to give, you have an opportunity to do so using either one of the uh, uh, vehicles that's currently on the screen. Uh, you can go to the church's website, again, partakerscv.org, click on the donate button and give whatever amount the Lord has placed upon your heart to give. Amen. Amen. You can uh, put your camera phone up there on the QR code and it'll take you right to our Giblify or you can uh, sell with the information that's on the screen or you can mail it or drop it off to our physical location. Amen. God, we thank you for the gift and the giver. We pray these gifts are acceptable to you for they are being given from cheerful hearts. Pray that you'll take these gifts and multiply these gifts and that they be used for your kingdom and to your glory. Over and above the amount, bless the heart of the giver is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, all right. It is time to lift up our prayer list. Those of you who have prayer requests, we ask that you would type the information into the chat or comment section. 
and we will come into agreement with you concerning the people who are on your mind, uh, in on your hearts and in your spirits for God's will to be done in their life. Today's prayer list is Sister Gloria Hairston, the sister of Sister Joyce Hicks, Brother Henry Harrell, Deacon Henry Harrell, Sister Gloria Selly, the mother of Abe Selly and Deborah Selly James. We're continuing to lift up my brother, Bishop Oscar Brown. I was blessed to see a Facebook video of him at the gym, working out, looking good, praying and believing that uh, God has completely healed him Amen. Uh, and, and the church that he pastors. Yeah. Uh, we're lifting up Sister Kim, Stra Kim Travis Ewing and we're lifting up Mother Vera Travis, uh, the entire Golden Girls Mother's Ministry and of course the entire Partakers Church family. Amen. Along with everyone uh, that you are requesting prayer for, let us go to God in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, we thank you for the relationship that you've given us through the redemptive work of Jesus Christ on the cross. We thank you that we're saved, born again, baptized believers. And with that, God comes access to the best that heaven has to offer. We ask that you would forgive us of our sins. Let nothing hinder this prayer request or our petitions or as we intercede on behalf of those in need. God, I pray that you would bless everyone who's in the building, everyone who's watching virtually, every name on the list, every name we've called, every name we can't recall at this time. You know where each one of us are and you know what we stand in need of. So move as only you can move, touch as only you can touch, heal as only you can heal, deliver as only you can deliver, help as only you can help, save as only you can save. We turn it over to you because we know that you're able and we trust you according to our faith. So we thank you again that you hear us and that it is done. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen, amen, amen and amen. Listen, uh, uh, follow us on YouTube. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Partakers Church Baptist Detroit. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Amen. amen. And this Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I ain't done that for a long time. Uh, there'll be Sunday school at nine o'clock, but it will be a shortened version because we are having our graduation Sunday. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, graduating all of our new members uh, who have completed their new members training and those who have graduated from grammar school, high school, college. We are celebrating you all together. My brother, uh, the Reverend Dr. Eric Clopton will be here from Cosmopolitan Community Church in Chicago to be our guest preacher, and we are excited. Worship will begin at 10 a.m. Listen, you need to be in the building or online to be part of this great worship service. Also, real quick, this isn't on the agenda, but I, uh, this was handed to me. I don't know if that can zoom in. Well, with the, it'll be online, but let me just show you. Oh, I'm in the wrong place. Show you this. I'm gonna scroll it up slow like they do the movie on the movies. We're having partakers in the park on August 20th uh, at Pewaukee Park from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. 2700 Annabelle across the street from the Senior Citizens Building. We'll be giving away food, clothes, book bags, supplies, uh, fun, fellowship, games, music, and sing-alongs. It says, please come bring your children to the fellowship with us in the park. We're looking forward to having a good time. See you at 11 o'clock on August 20th. 20th. Amen. We are going to have partakers in the park and all of the ministries will come together to serve and uh, uh, this community in which we've been planted and to do everything we can uh, to represent the hands and heart and the feet of Jesus Christ. Amen. So if you don't have any plans on August 20th, mark it in your calendar, come join us and be blessed by what God is doing through partakers. Amen? Amen. We thank and praise God for your presence and participation in another one of these outstanding partakers Bible study sessions. We pray that you have an awesome week. And until we meet again, partake up!